What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and some more Birthright coverage here. So we're wrapping up the last of the personalities here, which is actually at the beginning. And that is in the form of Kalite Dossier, who's basically the Imperial Chamberlain of Anuir. And really, pretty powerful figure in and of his uh, own right here. So off the bat here, a 12th level slash 16th level. So just, you know, insanely, again, uh, skilled here. Um, dual class, and we are in fighter slash diviner. So, uh, stat wise, we're looking at you know pretty low on the strength side, uh, but dex of 14, con 13, intelligence 19, wisdom 17, and charisma 15. Lawful good here, very great armor class, good hit point pool, although probably could be a little bit higher given his extremely high level. But um, also just a very strong bloodline, as you might expect, and given the, the backstory here, that also makes sense. But uh, 64 and, and duress, some blood abilities, resistance, detect lie, uh, d divine aura, and enhanced sense. And so some pretty potent gear here as well as you might expect of the Imperial Chamberlain here. So a broadsword plus four called Throne Guard. And also, more importantly, perhaps, uh, non-magical here, but the Signet Ring of the Imperial Seal of Anuir. So basically, uh, even though there is no more Emperor, he's about the closest thing that you could have to it as far as just uh, carrying sort of the official will of the city of Anuir. On his right hand, he does uh, wear a Ring of Office, which also acts as a Ring of Protection plus four, and he does have Bracers of Protection, AC four as well. So there's a lot of mystery surrounding him here, and so we're kind of kind of just dive into the history. So he's a middle-aged man of average build, has a fringe of dark hair outlining his head, accentuating his eagle-sharp eyes. His mouth looks firm and strong, his hands capable and sure. He's rarely seen without his ceremonial vestments, and he always wears the Imperial Seal of Anuir on a silver chain around his neck, uh, but he will not put it on himself. The quiet and polite dossier never raises his voice, as the Chamberlain, for a defunct empire, He'll continue to watch over the Iron Throne until a true king, um, or in this case, rather, a true emperor uh, emerges. Adept with both the sword and the scrying pool, he uses both as the need arises. This man, who has tirelessly helped rebuild the land, rejects both Avon and Borowin, the two main contenders for the throne. He sees that the two basically just concern themselves with personal glory uh, rather than the good of the empire, and so instead of helping either one, he plays them off each other, hoping that someday a true true king will emerge from the scions of um, uh, Anna Weir. So, and that could be where your one of your player characters in the campaign perhaps uh, meets those criteria. The Chamberlain's enemies whisper that he is none other than his purported ancestor, Traderic Dosier, somehow granted immortality at Deismar. For the last thousand years, they say he makes a point of disappearing for a few months at a time to return as his son, nephew, or some other relative. This pattern has led the rulers of Anuir to believe that the Dossier family remains always ready to produce a new Chamberlain, should the old one fall. Now, he does prefer that the nobles continue to place their faith in his family, and he entrusts the secrets of his alleged longevity to only a few. He claims publicly that he is descended from Traderic Dossier and carries his ancestors' bloodline, but immortal... Not by any stretch. Why, he asked suspicious nobles, would he not have aspired to the Iron Throne himself at least once if he truly could live forever? After all, who better than the Imperial Chamberlain to maneuver into that position, right? Lastly here, the Dossier family is scattered about Anwir. Some live in the hills of Dosan, others inhabit cottages near Diamond's Ruins, while others still serve as guardians of Morid. They all study histories, ancient histories, record current Anuirian events, and stand ready to aid the Chamberlain should he ask for help, which does occasionally happen. They share a proud legacy, whether or not he really is immortal. So, many different ways that we, he could be used in campaign. So certainly, if playing as uh, playing the game as uh, you know a domain ruler, and if you've risen up to any sort of challenges uh that you know the the campaign presents to where you could be a true contender for the the iron throne that certainly uh would have to go through his approval and sort of getting him on your side perhaps and sort of contrasting yourself to avon or borrowing uh as you know a sort of third polarity there as far as like someone who's again really looking out for the good of not just their own domain but maybe perhaps and we're as a whole that certainly would get him on your side and 
perhaps then sort of bring one or both of these guys in line, but that's doubtful, of course, because they seemingly cannot see past their own personal desires. So now that being said, if you choose to ally yourself with one or the other of these guys, then certainly that's going to put you at odds with him. And again, keep in mind that his relatives are scattered throughout and we are so certainly, um, you know, you, you, your, your deeds will be known essentially. Now playing as adventurers, certainly a lot of interesting possibilities here, especially if you do happen to go through the uh, Imperial city or just uh, receive any sort of contact via his family members, um, perhaps some sort of quest that could aid um, either the Imperial city itself or just Anwir in general. So that could always be a sort of source of interesting uh, objectives for your players to fulfill. And who knows, again, uh, there's always a possibility of maybe a character who starts out a campaign as unblooded, somehow acquiring a bloodline, and then perhaps rising through the ranks to someday be a domain ruler, and, you know, maybe even some sort of long epic campaign all the way up until, uh, you know, potential new uh, emperor. So lots of interesting possibilities here, but uh, should be just a great source of certainly knowledge, history, and what it really means to be a good ruler. Um, certainly, you know, can relate uh, the, the histories and maybe the, the successes and failures and where to go right uh, uh, th through the history of the, the different role um, uh, emperors and so on and so forth. So, but, uh, you know, just practical terms, uh, a, a great uh, quest giver again. And, you know, should you prove successful, certainly having him and the resources of the city of Anuir uh, at your disposal certainly cannot hurt your player characters um, or even your domain if you again get on uh, his good side but how have you guys used him in your campaigns um, you know again as domain rulers or actual adventuring and what uh, sort of um, effect uh, has that had on your characters and how has that played off to the other various rulers especially uh, these two guys here so let us know in the comments guys be really interested to hear about that um, and you know if anybody's taken the bold step of just taking on and taking out perhaps the imperial city whether it's again allied to one of these two or just you know just a pure power grab uh how has that worked out potentially so hit us up in the comments guys love to hear everything that you have to say about your campaigns that have in some way involved um, the imperial chamberlain here and if you've made any other modifications to the character just to sort of bring it up into fifth or whatever version of the game that you're playing so drop those comments guys like and subscribe that will wrap up the different personalities here from the core box and we're going to move on to some of the just core mechanics and other um, lore background things for the system here so stay tuned we're going to start several new series and we'll see you then take care